Hello, and welcome back to uh, a slightly different video than normal. This is a division composition guide for Hearts of Iron 3 and Black Ice version 10.33. Um, there is something a little bit odd about this. Um, I'm actually recording the audio, so just my voice, uh, separately from the main video for a change. Normally I do it together in one sitting, uh, but unfortunately I had some recording issues. Um, and for whatever reason, my voice didn't come up. I'm not sure if NVIDIA did an update and it just shifted around my settings. But uh, unfortunately, this video is impacted as well as the beginning of the campaign against Germany and uh, the invasion of the Low Countries. Uh, so unfortunately, you're going to deal with my voice in post. So I might be a little bit out of sync with what happens on screen, but hopefully not too much. Anyway, with that out of the way, uh, as you can see on the screen, I am talking, I think, a little bit about what you missed off camera. And to be honest, not too much. Uh, there was a, a couple of, of changes um, to... Well, I wouldn't say changes. They, they attacked us along the front, the Maginot, and they've lost probably, I would say, about 800,000 troops so far. Uh, which probably means they are doomed. Regardless of what happens against us, they've probably had it. But anyway, looks like I've started talking about div division composition. So, uh, I think I start out with my basic infantry template, and that's what you see, I think, before you. Uh, something to bear in mind with infantry, I find, is you want a decent mix of different types of units, uh, and you want to pay attention to the combined arm bonus. So in this case, it's 39%. Um... I find that if you... The reason why I don't like doubling up on certain things like artillery, etc. Is that you aren't getting the maximum combined arms bonus possible if you put two different types of artillery in the same unit. And your division will be a little bit lopsided. And you can see on the screen here, uh, your divisional stats there at the top. Uh, and ideally you want something that is a decent mixture across the board. You don't want something that is too top heavy in one particular stat. So in this case, you want infantry to have good soft attack because that's what they're going to be dealing with most of the time. But decent hard attack is good as well um, as a different option uh, because it means they can hold their own against tanks, especially in defensive positions where they've dug in. And what am I going to go on to now? I might be explaining why I despise medium artillery in a minute, but... <laughs> Because I am not a big fan of medium artillery, are they? I'm doing probably a little bit of a talk through about fire support and things. Yeah, so specialist units. Now, if I'm making something like ski infantry, uh, mountain infantry, um, you want pack artillery in there. And again, I want to use stuff that... So, for example, you'll see here that this division doesn't use any fuel. And... For my basic infantry, any specialised divisions like this, marines, so if you replace the mountain infantry with marines, this is a perfectly good marine division as well. Um, I like to use stuff that doesn't use fuel because I, find, I think it, I, I personally find that it's a little bit better to use um, in those scenarios because if you use something with, that uses fuel and then you take a port for example, you're, you know, it's just going to use a little bit more convoy. So... That's just personally the way that I prefer, and I think I'm mentioning there about putting Marine in instead of Mountain, and it'll it'll lead to the same sort of result. Okay, so this is probably where I'm talking about paratroopers. So for paratroopers, you want to include things that are droppable from planes. So in the early game, you only have access to paratroopers... Motorcycle Recon Attachment, uh, Airborne Engineer, Light Vehicle, and Divisional Headquarters. Now, if you'd like, you can put two paratroopers in, um, and that's another option. Or, eventually, you'll unlock uh, Airborne Mixed Support, which I normally recommend putting in, and Air Landing Infantry as well. And then you'll have pretty much a full division of paratroops. But in the early war, this is what I would go with, uh, what's on screen at the moment, because I think this is a decent mix um, you get quite a lot of bang for your buck out of these units. Uh, for what they are, really, they're pretty cheap to produce. I haven't built any paratroops, but once you start building them, they get cheap very quickly. Ah, so this is my basic militia unit. Now, I go, when I play as Germany, I like to create militia units like this, that are literally just militia, anti-tank, and division headquarters, purely for repression and... 
sort of block divisions. So in the event that the Allies land, or try to, if you check a rocket artillery in here as well, you've got a pretty inexpensive way just to put down sort of 40 soft attack and 40 hard attack. And then I position them in key provinces. So in Brittany, like sort of towards the Briak or Rostin there, or Moralu. Um, if I just put like a screen of these divisions in core level commands behind any ports because they're good for reinforcing um, and they help dissuade allied advances um, from the front lines. If you put one, for example, in Carantan there, um, you've effectively got a bit of a block lift uh, just to stop the allies from expanding as quickly and you can probably get your tanks into position while your militia hold them in place. So for garrisons, um, I'm a big fan of something like this, where I show divisional headquarters, anti-tank. See, you can replace one of the anti-aircrafts there with an anti-tank. And I think I'm about to show that. See, look at me go. So this unit is probably my go-to look for a garrison unit for the coast. I find that it gives you the best balance between uh, your standard sort of soft attack against your hard attack. And again, it's all about balance. The thing is, though, a lot of this division composition is, is up to you. If you want to switch out rocket artillery for artillery, you can do so. But the only reason I would go for rocket artillery in this case for the militia and the garrisons is they're a little bit cheaper. Um, and this is a late war infantry division. So if you go for this, you get slightly more soft attack once it's been upgraded. Um, which is really the major bonus. And I, I go for this one again because it's quite a cheap infantry unit. It's only cost 1385 to build. And then once you get the practicals going as well, this can get ridiculously cheap if you play as the Soviets. Uh, but it still packs quite a wallop. I mean, you're getting 73 soft attack with 43 um, hard attack with piercing, which is good. It's a good unit, bearing in mind as well that when you go up to eight divisions in a unit in the late war, you can probably chuck in something like uh, AA as well, which then gives you some anti-aircraft power um, with some extra piercing as well. But back to garrisons, um, that's my standard garrison template, and when I play as Germany, that's the one that I use to garrison all the French ports. I often find it's one of the best ways of doing it, because you are getting a pretty inexpensive unit at about just under 7 IC uh, and once you start building them and once your practical gets a bit better you're going to get very good at dealing with that very quickly. Now this is the bit where I think I talk about some of the problems I had with the French division composition. Never do what's on screen at the moment with two artillery in the same group. You could switch out one of those artillery to put in anti-tank or something else. You, you don't need to have double artillery in a unit because you're going to just impact your combined arms bonus and now that infantry unit if it gets attacked by a tank division it's not going to do very much to a tank division in the same way that you know if I put a unit up against it that had anti-tank in it suddenly you've got something that's a much more formidable opponent against tanks uh, which to be honest when you're playing as any other to be honest any nation in Hearts of Iron 3 you're going to need anti-tank and piercing to, to handle tank divisions. Uh, because tanks really... I mean, and in World War II in general, tanks are the major force of World War II. They are the exploiting breakthrough element. So I think I'm just going to show you now why I don't like medium artillery. So medium artillery costs double artillery, standard artillery. Now... Bearing in mind some of this might be impacted by my, my practicals, but for that, you're only getting an additional 10 soft attack. Why would you do that when you can get the anti-tank that you can probably see directly below it? That does give you a little bit of soft attack, gives you free, but you're getting 29 hard attack and 27 piercing. So you're trading an additional sort of 10 soft attack for all of the stuff that anti-tank gives you. There's no reason to put medium artillery and artillery in the same unit. And the fact that the French had so many divisions of this actually hurt me. 
because the amount of IC that would have been wasted from that sheer amount of medium artillery, you know, you could get so many tank divisions for that. So, yeah. And then I'm just demonstrating the IC cost of anti-tank. Anti-tank, pound for pound, is one of the cheapest things to get in this game once you start getting the practicals going for it. And it's going to have a benefit pretty much the entire game. You might as well get it. I'm, yeah, I'm a big proponent of anti-tank. And I think I'm showing you what the French divisions looked like when I started this campaign. And they're not good. I mean, on paper, this does look... I mean, this division will do a job. 86 soft attack is great. It'll be very good against the infantry. But it's not IC effective. And the anti-tank ability isn't great. So if this comes up against a single tank division, it's buggered. It just won't... It won't cut the mustard but you stick two of these divisions together over a river with anti-tank in with the combined arms bonus being slightly higher and they're gonna hold a lot easier and to be honest when we start looking at the french campaign not to spoil anything but next episode of the french campaign you're gonna see this anti-tank in an in effect and it's it's interesting actually just you know because i'm recording this post i'm i feel validated in my anti-medium artillery stance that i have because I really despise it. So in a way, it's been good that my recording mucked up. Because, you know, it's good to go back and watch your videos every now and then. But yeah, that's that's my standard division for infantry. And, and to be honest, I wouldn't recommend breaking from that. If you wanted, um, as Germany, you could probably build assault guns in. Um, instead of either anti-tank or artillery. Um... Or instead of both, so you could just have assault guns in there and then maybe put in anti-air. Um, because assault gun, as you can see there, does a little bit of both. Um, but I think for infantry it's probably not needed. I would recommend maybe doing assault guns with semi-motorized infantry. And I think I'm going to touch on my motorized forces in a minute. But as you can see, I'm, I'm still ranting about artillery by the looks of it. What am I doing now? This is interesting, watching yourself back without any sound. It's just like an out-of-body experience. What's next? Okay, motorized, I reckon. I reckon I'm going to talk about armor or motorized. Right, armor. So for me, for armor, I'm a proponent of fast divisions and then a proponent of breakthrough divisions in the same sort of way as the British Doctrine, actually. So, I quite like fast light tank divisions, like I think I'm building here, that do sort of a... They're not great at breaking through. I mean, they are still a tank division, so they're still good at that. But they're fast. And that's the main thing you want out of a light armour division. You just want it to be quick. You don't want it to be particularly sort of slow slow going so six miles per hour for a tank division is pretty good um you could make this quicker if you remove the motorized engineer and the truck transport um but if you do that you're going to lose a little bit of your uh, battle group transport combined arms percentage so it just depends what you're really looking for uh but for a standard tank division this is the sort of thing i would go for um and i would always put recon and engineers in tank divisions purely because you get the best bonuses by doing that and they give you speed bonuses as well normally which is very important uh i've put a sp artillery in there as well because sp and t artillery can be a good one for a light, light tank division so for motorized uh this is the sort of standard build that i like for them look at me go now this sort of standard division is it's good, um, and it's quite flexible. Um, if you haven't got the best economy in the world, building motorized infantry can sometimes be a good bet. Um, and if you want a slightly cheaper division, you just chuck in artillery like I've done here. And this is a cheap motorized unit. Once you get the practicals going, that 33 IC will go down, um, and you'll get a, a pretty good bang for your buck out of this sort of motorized infantry. It's pretty much just a direct upgrade of the standard infantry division. Just quicker, really, at six miles per hour so it'll outpace quite a lot of different units um, and I've just made it a little bit cheaper there as well by putting in the motorcycle recon attachment and putting in the civilian transport that brings it to under 30 IC so that's a very cost effective division um, 
as a basic unit for for what you're looking for. I'd recommend building those very early on as Germany. Just a couple of them every year because it'll build your practical up. So I'm a massive proponent of semi-motorized infantry and infantry tanks in tandem. I love it. This division template I'm about to put together here has so much soft attack and a pretty decent hard attack value. Not great. But if you changed out the assault gun, for example, for a tank destroyer, you've then got an even better division when it comes to hard attack. And I'm probably about to show that. Oh no, I've stuck with the assault gun. Oh no, the armoured car, of course, because of the recon bonus. Um, but this division will make mincemeat of pretty much anything. It's the ultimate break breakthrough division. You put this in the front line, you use it to break through the strongest area of their line. And I think I'm showing a couple of them that I've got built. Um, you don't need to be particularly fast because then you use the light tank divisions that I talked about earlier to exploit the defences. Um, and that gives you, I think, the best possible sort of breakthrough division, other than medium armour divisions. Um, but again, a medium armour division can be quite expensive, and this semi-motorised infantry division isn't probably as expensive as an armour division. So, armour... Uh, they're a little bit slower, um, but they do have much better softness value. So you want to try and build your armor divisions to be as hard as possible and have not a very good softness. Or sorry, have low softness percentage. So all the things that I'm adding at the moment should add up to quite a low softness group. And you'll notice that this is very similar from the light tank division, um, except that Again, it's sort of up to you. I mean, I'd put the SP artillery in, or standard artillery. So standard artillery in the early war. Um, this division will, again, have amazing breakthrough potential. Um, and quite good speed. You can see there it's about five and a half kilometers per hour. Um, if you put the SP artillery in, it's same sort of speed, uh, but it's a little bit better on the old softness. Um, and then the same thing with Tank Destroyer. So you, you can see the stats, can't you, on the screen changing. You go from sort of... It's all a bit of a, a numbers game. What do you prefer out of your tank divisions? What do you think your tank divisions are going to be coming up against? As Germany, you're probably not going to be coming up against as many tank divisions against France. But in the late war, you're going to want more tank destroyers because you're going to be fighting the Soviets who get a shed ton of tank divisions via event spawns. So you just got to play around with the numbers and see what sort of tanks work best for you. I personally like what you're seeing on screen at the moment as a cheap division. And then I would replace the artillery with um, probably assault guns or SP artillery. And then the late war, when you get eight brigades allowed, I would chuck in tank destroyers as another possibility. Okay, so I think we've talked armor now, we've talked semi-motorized infantry, light tanks. wonder what I'm going to go on to now. So this is why you shouldn't put light infantry or you shouldn't double up on, on main brigades. Because you're using double the amount of manpower effectively and you're taking away a slot that could be used to put a support battalion in. So, for example, this division won't have any anti-tank in because the spot that you'd put the anti-tank in has been taken up by light infantry. This also, again, isn't very IC efficient because generally the most expensive part of a division is the main aspect, the mountain infantry, the actual main brigade. So, mountain infantry, armor, light infantry. If you do that, you're going to struggle to pump out as many divisions. And you're doubling up your manpower usage as well. This unit uses 23,000 manpower for one division. And that's not great. The only time I would recommend maybe doing this is if you put like an infantry attachment in with a garrison. Um, sometimes that can be good because it can just give the garrison unit a little bit more sort of punch. And stop it from shattering. But other than that, I don't recommend putting sort of two units in together. And Italy is another nation that suffers from this. They put like militia in with their infantry or their motorized and it you've got to always remember the speed stat of units you want to try and match the speed stat more than anything else with your divisions um i wouldn't recommend putting armored car in an infantry division like this french french division set up because the armored car is so much quicker than everything else it's just wasted 
in an infantry unit. Um, so some sort of basic tips at this stage for how I would sort of set things up on a basic level. There's a few sort of minor things as well in relation to the French army. They, they have a lot of artillery and a lot of it was very under leveled so it's taken me quite some time to build up the upgrades but the end result was definitely worth it from what I could tell. Oh, the 3rd Division Ligueria de Cavalier. So again, this is another example of it. Why would you put them together in the same unit? It doesn't accomplish anything. You're just slowing down the semi-motorized infantry by putting the cav in there because the cav is slightly slower than the semi-motorized infantry and you're using you can take those cav divisions or those cav units and probably make them into other units with a couple of support brigades they won't be the best but you'd rather have more units on tactical level than one bulky unit that you can't use for anything so that's just my two cents on the uh the old doubling up of brigades aspect I can assure you there was a reason why I was doing, or why I was ranting so much about how bad the French unit composition was. Because it took a long time to fix it. Okay, and I do end the video off by talking a little bit about the UK in a moment. So, I think I'm just going to build... Yeah, so this is a late war tank division. And the only other thing you would need to add to this, this is assuming you've got eight brigade slots allowed, you would put in the motorized infantry. And then this is a very strong tank division that's extremely tough to break down. It's only got 20% toughness or 20% softness. So it's going to be very, very good at handling infantry. But it's very production intensive. You know, it, it's got 50 IC. And it'll be over that once you put in the motorized, or the semi-motorized, sorry, the motorized infantry battalion. Once you chuck that in, it's going to be even more expensive. Now, again, it's all down to what you like as a player. You're going to get your own metas and your own ways of playing. This game is quite forgiving with its division composition. You know, unless you're making something that's just all artillery, you, you're going to probably do fine. But if you follow this sort of guide for and what you see on screen at the moment... For sort of some basic units you'll you'll get some decent bang out of your buck here um, i don't know why i've put two engineer in there that must be a typo i'm sure i'm going to fix that please fix that oh god you don't need to engineer do it remove no that's not what you want to remove no stop telling people it's good when it's not get rid of it go get rid of the engineer come on come on yes oh i finally noticed it that was painful yeah, so this sort of unit here is quite a good balanced semi-motorized infantry unit, but you can change this how you want. You know, you want to put tank destroyer in there, put a tank destroyer in there. Just bear in mind that if you haven't got the production for tank destroyers, just use anti-tank. And to be honest, nine times out of ten, I just recommend using anti-tank rather than tank destroyers because I think for the price of one tank destroyer brigade, you can probably get seven anti-tank brigades once your practicals are going. So you might as well just get the anti-tank. It's a lot cheaper. I, I prefer to have more u numerous units than to have just one elite core because the more units to have, the more maneuvers you can do. So in the Soviet campaign, for anyone that's watched that, you were, you probably saw that I was able to do two different massive encirclement operations because I had the sheer volume of units to do it. And I mean, part of that is because the Soviets have a lot of manpower and they have a lot of protection. Ah, right, UK. So my UK setup is I would take this brigade here, the 21st, and split the motorized infantry battalion and the motorized support, the truck transport, off of that one and then build a tank division. So an armor we need, a motorized engineer, a divisional HQ, and an artillery unit. And then make that into an armored division. Then with the rest of it, the infantry tank and the artillery, I'd make that into semi-motorized infantry brigade and then put that on the front line with the 4th Indian Division and the 7th Armoured Division. This is for you, um, the weekend. This was the, the particular bit of advice you wanted. And then I would just beeline across North Africa with those units and then use what infantry units that you start with in Af or Egypt as a supporting force because you do start with a couple of extra infantry units that you can use 
just to surround to Brook. So you'll probably get an encirclement around to Brook if you concentrate your armor and smash through the line. With your so take your cavalry, you take your armor divisions and your semi-motorized and motorized infantry. You go to Razatin and then you do another encirclement from there and surround Benghazi. And you'll pretty much have knocked the Italians out of North Africa at that point if you can pull it off. Uh, you can't let any of them escape to that fortified position there at El Sidra. Otherwise, the Germans will probably reinforce by the time that you're safe. Now, I would build some militia units. So I would do a standard infantry template, but replace the infantry with militia. And then put the militia in East Africa and use the militia of maybe one corps of infantry from the UK. And have them deal with East Africa. That should be more than enough to handle that very quickly. Uh, because you'll also get some event... Uh, spawn divisions from the recruit African units aspect. Once you handle East Africa, and I wouldn't recommend garrisoning Babara, I would have a minimal garrison there and concentrate all your forces on the other frontier here, because it's just a lot easier to, to push out. Take all your units from East Africa once you've cleared East Africa, as I'm motioning here, and use them to reinforce the whole of the East Indies. So all the Dutch East Indies area, Use all the troops from there and reinforce the units here. Because, as demonstrated in my UK campaign, the Japanese AI will not be able to shift decent-ish militia-level units from ports. They'll run out of supply, and then when they run out of supply, you can just take them out. Don't attack them too early, just let them stay in the interior. They'll, they can take all the interior provinces as long as you hold the ports, and they'll never win. As India, I would recommend holding a line just east of Burma, or west of Burma, I'm not sure, um, on that Bangkok uh, river line there. That's probably the best place to hold them, like I did in the UK campaign. And then for Norway, I would recommend probably a core of, two cores of three divisions, three mountain divisions each, and if you send that to Norway, with air support, probably three wings of close air support, supported by three wings of fighters. You've probably got enough with your navy as well uh, to hold that area pretty much in place with no real trouble. Um, for the French campaign though, uh, I've got a plan and the plan will be effectively to do what the Allies were meant to have done in World War II. Um, but the major difference will be that I'm going to have some extra reserve units in the Ardennes area. So on screen at the moment you can see that I've got several cores in the Ardennes area. Supported by the 7th Corps there, which is an additional reserve corps, just in case I need it. Um, but I'm going to slam all of, as many units as I can effectively, into Belgium and uh, the Dutch, or province, or sorry, province. The, so the Netherlands, um, just to try and hold a line along the River Meuse, and then up to the rivers outside of Amsterdam. And I think I'm probably going to show that in a minute. There we go. So this is the line that I'm planning to hold. As you can see, it's not very complex, but it should be a relatively easy win. So thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks again. Bye-bye. And I'm sorry, as I say, that my recording was a little bit off-colour. Off Thanks again. Bye-bye.